In this AV lecture, we will be discussing the muscles of the torso, lab 18. This lab is a little different than our previous muscle labs because for this lab you are only responsible to know the origin and insertion for four muscles, and those are listed here. The first is the diaphragm, second is rhomboidus major, third, serratus anterior, and then your final one is the external abdominal oblique. As with our other muscle labs, for all muscles presented in this AV lecture, you're responsible to know one action for any muscle, as well as one synergist, one antagonist, and you must be able to identify any muscle presented in this lab using a model. First muscle that we're going to discuss in this lab is indicated here, and this is our serratus anterior. This is a origin insertion action muscle. The origin is ribs one through eight. The insertion is the vertebral border of the scapula. The vertebral border refers to the side of the scapula that is relatively closer to the vertebrae. So this would be the more medial side of the scapula. And then the inferior angle of the scapula is also an insertion. The inferior angle would be the um, most inferior or the bottom part of the scapula. And the action for serratus anterior is to abduct the scapula, and this means to move the scapula away from the spine. Um, now, a real-life example of using your serratus anterior muscle would be if you're playing tennis, Anytime you swing the racket and hit the ball, you'd be using your serratus anterior. Our next muscle we're going to discuss is indicated here. This is our external abdominal oblique. The origin for this muscle is ribs 5 through 12. The insertion is the linea alba, or the crest of the pubis. You can just pick one for the quiz. Whichever one you like, study that one and stick with it. And the action for this muscle is to compress the abdominal wall and laterally rotate the trunk. Our next muscle that we are going to discuss is the rectus abdominis, which is indicated by the black arrow. The action of this muscle is to compress the abdominal wall and to flex the vertebral column. Now, the rectus abdominis is commonly known as your six-pack abs. These are the muscles that, if you have very developed rectus abdominis, they appear um, to give you these six-pack abs. Now we're looking at the uh, posterior trunk, and the first muscle we have indicated here is the rhomboidus major. The origin is the spinous processes of thoracic vertebrae 2 through 5. The insertion is the lower one-third vertebral border of the scapula, and the action is to adduct the scapula, and this would mean to bring the scapula close to the midline. Just superior to the rhomboidus major is the rhomboidus minor, and the action for this muscle is to also adduct the scapula. Now, what exactly is adducting the scapula? Uh, well, if you, if you imagine uh, you're at the gym and you're uh, doing seated rows, as you pull back on the machine, you will be actually using your rhomboidus major and minor to adduct your scapula, to draw that scapula towards the midline. Now another application might be if you're on a river trip and you're kayaking or you're rowing a boat. Um, this again, is, you'd be using your rhomboidus major and minor to uh, do this rowing motion because as you're rowing, you will be adducting your scapula. Deep to rhomboidus major and minor, we have a group of muscles that we're gonna collectively refer to as the erector spinae. And the action of these erector spinae muscles generally is to extend and rotate the vertebral column. And also these muscles extend and rotate the head. Let's look at these erector spinae muscles individually. The erector spinae muscles are made up of three individual muscles, um, as shown here. The purple is the spinalis muscle. The red is the longissimus muscle. And the orange is the iliocostalis muscle. Another muscle we have here is the quadratus lumborum muscle. 
And the, mus the action of this muscle is to extend the vertebral column and also to abduct the vertebral column. So if you were to do back bends, um, this would be um, this this would be extending the vertebral column, and then to abduct the vertebral column, this would be if you were to um, bend side to side, bend your back side to side. This would be abducting the vertebral column. The muscles in this lab are also going to be involved in inhalation and exhalation, and. On the image shown on the left here, any arrow, any muscle with an arrow that's pointing superiorly, this means this muscle will be involved in inhalation, in breathing in. And any muscle that has a arrow pointing down um, inferiorly, this means that that muscle is going to be involved in exhalation. And the muscle in this image that we want to focus on is the external intercostals. And again, the action of this muscle is going to to be inhalation, um, but more technically speaking, this what this muscle does is it elevates the ribs away from the midline, and that effectively increases the volume in the thorax, and then that allows inhalation to take place. Now for muscles of exhalation, we want to focus on the internal intercostals. Um, and, and that those muscles are indicated in that left image there. Again, these muscles are going to be involved in exhalation, and uh, more technically speaking, this, this muscle is going to collapse the ribs towards the midline, and this effectively decreases the volume in the thorax, which forces air out of the body. And then our final muscle that we have in this lab is indicated with the yellow arrow, and this is the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is going to be originating on the xiphoid process, that's um, inferior portion on the sternum, as well as the lower ribs and the upper lumbar vertebrae. This muscle is very unique because it inserts on itself and that feature is called the central tendon. It doesn't insert onto a, a muscle, it actually inserts onto uh, itself effectively, and, and that's the central tendon. And then the action of this muscle is for inhalation and passive exhalation. Now this is, this is different from our internal intercostals because this the diaphragm is going to be, it won't be forcing air out of the lungs. It's only going to be passively expelling air out of the lungs. And this is a major difference between the diaphragm and the intercostals.